guys, it's Trina and this is my October reading wrap up. So I'm going to talk about and review all the books that I read this month. Before I get into that, I have kind of an announcement. You may have already seen on my channel this month, I did post an announcement for something called the YA Booktube Awards. I want to give a shout out to the creator of this project that is Elizabeth over at the channel The Allery. If you missed that announcement, I will link it down below. But a brief overview of these awards is that you guys are going to help us pick the top books of 2016. You will nominate your favorite young adult books in eight different genres or categories and then the top three of those books are going to be read by a panel of judges who are booktubers to determine a variety of the best YA books of 2016. I am a judge for two of the categories, fantasy and debut, so I really look forward to hearing from you guys what you think the top books in fantasy and debuts from 2016 are. Now let's look at what my TBR for this month was and see how I did on that. I set three goals for myself this month. I wanted to read two new releases and I didn't do that. I didn't even finish one new release. Although I started some, I just didn't finish it because goal number two kind of took over. I wanted to read at least two mysteries or creepy spooky books for Halloween time. I did complete that goal. I actually ended up reading more than two of those because that was the mood I ended up being in this month. And lastly, I wanted to read one of these three debut novels that I've had sitting around for forever, and I did that. I read Signs of You. This month I actually gave ratings of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 stars, so it was quite a mixture, and as always, I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to work my way up to my favorite reads of the month. So the worst book that I read this month, and I just mean worst as in terms of a level of my enjoyment, it's not that this book is bad or that everyone would hate it, but I really did not enjoy A Cold Legacy by Megan Shepard. This is the third and final book in the Mad Men's Daughter trilogy, and this is a series of retellings of different classics. So the first the first book was a retelling of The Island of Dr. Moreau, the second book was a retelling of Jekyll and Hyde, and this book was a retelling of Frankenstein. Some of you guys may remember last year, book number two in this series made it on my worst books of the year list. I did not like book two, so you may be wondering why did I continue in this series, but it was just because I wanted that Frankenstein retelling. I thought that would be a perfect type of story for this time of year. I really wanted to see how that story was going to be done because I really loved the first book in this series. It gave me the creeps, it gave me chills. I thought it was a great retelling. I wanted book three to surprise me after book two and do that again and unfortunately it just did not. I ended up giving this book a one star rating because I had to really sit down and ask myself, did I like anything about this? I did not like the characters. I feel like they are all so shallow. I don't always know their motivations. For instance, the main relationship, the romance in this series, one minute she's saying, I hate him. I'm not ever going to go out with him. Oh yes, I will marry you. I don't like that phrase, too stupid to live. I've always thought it was kind of a really mean thing to say and I didn't really ever think I had known a character that I would apply that to until I read this book. I definitely think that Juliet is just kind of dumb. She does things knowing that they're going to blow up in her face, but she does it anyway because she's like, I know that I'm lying to my fiancé and going completely against this promise I made to him, but I don't want to tell him because I really want to marry him. So, like, it's okay because I really want to marry him. No, girl, you are lying to him, and he's also lying to you, by the way, so y'all just need to just, just go your separate ways. I just... I... I no! The only thing that I liked about this book was the setting. It does really capture an atmospheric, gothic, like Frankenstein's castle setting. However, a setting is just a backdrop, and that really doesn't make up for characters' plot or writing, so it just ended up not being a series for me. Next, I read Signs of You by Emily France, and this one is a young adult contemporary debut novel with kind of a paranormal element to it as well. Our main character has lost her mother a few years ago, and one day as she is shopping in a grocery store, she swears that she sees her mother there just in one of the aisles shopping. And it turns out that all of her friends who have also lost loved ones have started seeing these people around town. That's all I knew about this book going into it, but what I really did not expect and what surprised me is that this does have a lot of history that's based in Catholicism. So there is this Catholic saint named Saint Ignatius, I believe, and this author actually has a background in traveling the world and studying different religions, and that's where she finds her inspiration from. So she took the history of the real Saint Ignatius, who was a real person, but then she twisted it. It just kind of uses that history as a jumping point to start this story. I did definitely get a vibe, kind of like the Da Vinci Code, where these characters are trying to track down a spiritual historical artifact. However, it's not like on a global level. It's not a 
big of a story as Da Vinci Code was. The writing was really easy to get through. I never wanted to put the book down because I was really curious to find out what is happening here. I gave this book, I think it was two or two and a half stars as a rating. And the reason for that is because it really didn't touch on the grief of losing your loved ones in the way that I had kind of wanted from this book when I picked it up. It ended up just going in a bit of a different direction than what I had wanted out of this book. However, the main reason that I gave it a low rating is because it cuts off literally in the middle of the plot. The characters are like, okay, the next step we need to do is this, and then after that we need to do is this. And then she kisses a guy, and the story ends because somehow that is the conclusion to everything, to all of her problems, kissing a guy. And so that, to me, was kind of like, Nah. Next up, also at two and a half stars, is The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the third and final book in the Remnant Chronicles trilogy, which follows a runaway princess who runs away on her wedding day because she does not want to be in an arranged marriage, but little does she know that the prince she was supposed to marry has come after her to track her down, and an assassin from a third kingdom has also come after her. I do think that this book concludes the series well, however, I just unfortunately kind of lost interest in this story about halfway through. It turns out that I just was not really a fan of this particular world. I did just upload a full series review that's non-spoiler on this series where I talk much more in detail about my thoughts on this book and why I didn't like it as much as the other two. So I'm not going to, you know, repeat myself too much. You guys can definitely check out that series review if you want to know more. I will link that down below. Then I read Forthcomings by Megan McCafferty, which is the fourth book in the Jessica Darling series. This is a contemporary series told through our main character's diary entries. In this book, she has just graduated from college and is in that horrible job hunting phase. This one is my least favorite in the series and part of that is because every other book in the series has either covered a year of Jessica's life, like her school year, and the last book actually covered four years. It covered her entire college experience. This one, however, only covers one week of Jessica's life. So the plot and her story was really stretched out. She's a very snarky character, which at times can really add a lot of humor to the situation. However, like I said, I gave this one three stars instead of more than that because as much as I enjoy Jessica as a character and how she does acknowledge her own flaws, I feel like Jessica sometimes is just really harsh on these people she considers her friends and I feel like at times she just mocks her friend for being bisexual, like just for the sake of being mean. And I don't know, I just feel like this character and the author kind of should have grown out of that attitude by this point of when this book was published and what Jessica's age really is. I also read Night Film by Marisha Pessel this month. This is an adult thriller mystery. This is about an investigative journalist who is studying this film director who has this like huge cult following. He makes these really messed up films that mess with your mind. This director has actually gone completely off grid. He has not made a movie in years. No one even knows what this guy looks like. And then one day the director's daughter dies and it is declared a suicide. But our main character, the journalist, starts investigating her death because he doesn't believe it's a suicide. He thinks that there's something really mysterious and occult going on with her family so he wants to research her death more. And as he is investigating this case, he finds himself drawn into some weird things, to some paranormal stuff, to some different religious cult stuff, and yeah. Yeah, it's really creepy. This book does somewhat have a multimedia format, so sometimes you get like newspaper clippings or different website searches and stuff like that. However, most of the story is just told in normal text, so there isn't a lot of that mixed media in there. It's a lot less than I was expecting. The reason I took a star off instead of giving this five stars is because I didn't need the last like 10 or 15 pages of this book. Like I felt if it had cut off earlier, it would have left you with that really mind twisting, oh my gosh, what do I believe really happened? But I think it extended it and gave you almost too much answers, if that makes sense. Shout out to Sarah Without an H for always recommending this book. I am really glad that I read it. It was just the perfect amount of that creepiness that I wanted for around Halloween time. Next, I read four volumes of The Walking Dead comics by Robert Kirkman. I gave all four of these volumes five stars. I'm just gonna talk about them all together. This is an adult zombie apocalypse comic series, and these were volumes 18, 19, 20, and 21. I feel like these four volumes volumes make up a good solid story arc and volume 18 is the one that picks up right after you meet Negan who is one of the big villains in this series and that is where season 7 the one that just came back of the TV show has picked up. I do really enjoy reading slightly ahead of the TV show because I have found that I really anticipate what I know is about to come and how the show is going to do it because the show does things very very differently than the comics do. Sometimes you'll have a character death and it's a totally different character in the show. As for these comics themselves it really just is about 
about Negan, what kind of a villain Negan is, the threat that he poses, how he and his presence and his group of people are going to affect our survivors, Rick and his group, what the world is going to look like because of this and maybe after this too. I really like where the series is going because at this point it is very much less about the zombies. Like the zombies are no big deal, but the people trying to reestablish some semblance of civilization and dealing with other people who clash with their ideas of what civilization should be. I really want to see humanity kind of get back on its feet and I think that this is kind of starting that. Negan is a pretty disgusting villain. I really don't like him. I was kind of uncomfortable reading a lot of his scenes, but that's also the sign of a good villain, so I'm not taking stars off for that. It is quite graphically violent, however the illustrations in these comics are all black and white, so that kind of takes down the blood and gore aspect a little bit, but I do really enjoy this series, and I really enjoyed this story arc. And lastly, my favorite book that I read this month was Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the sequel to The Diviners. This is a young adult paranormal series. There is quite a large cast of characters in this series, and each of the books have them kind of solving a new murder mystery and most of our characters have these different paranormal abilities and the main plot of this one deals with characters who can actively walk inside dreams. There is this outbreak of this thing called the sleeping curse or the sleeping illness. People fall asleep and they never wake up but they're not dead. They're just constantly dreaming and if they dream for long enough they do start to die. So we have a couple of characters who are able to walk in dreams so they are trying to figure out this mystery. This series is also historical. It is set in New York in the 1920s. I did listen to this one on audiobook and the narration is one of my favorite audiobooks from a single narrator that I have ever listened to. She does a fantastic job of using the slang and doing the New York 20s accents and it just brought it to life so much. And I know that she does the first one's audiobook as well. There is a lot of diversity in this series. In this book particularly, we have main point of view characters who are black, white, and Chinese. We have characters who are able-bodied and one that does have a disability. Most of the characters are straight, but we also have one major point of view character and his love interest that are gay. You guys may remember that I really kind of ripped on her previous series, Jimma Doyle, for the representation in that, how I really thought that it was done so poorly. In this series, it is done beautifully, in my opinion. You know, that's only my opinion. If you disagree with me, you can definitely let me know that. But I really believe that she has brought all of these different characters' struggles, the persecution that they are facing in the 1920s, and brought that into play into this plot. Because you definitely see the discrimination against the characters who are from Harlem or from Chinatown. You see how they are discriminated against. You see how the gay character has to be closeted in this society. But that type of prejudice historical culture is balanced so well with these characters who are all kind of modern thinkers. They're very progressive for their time. She shows you the truth of how history has treated people while while still balancing that for a modern audience and I feel like that is so important to be able to do. These characters are phenomenal. The setting is so atmospheric and amazing. This story weaves together so well. I just love everything about this series. So this one definitely earned a five stars. Oh, I love it. Those are my reviews of the 10 things I read this month. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them down below or let me know what your favorite book you read this month was. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!